We want to look at the third plague, the lies, Exodus chapter 8, 16 to 17. Let's follow God's word and see what we can learn from God's word today for our own lives here. Because this is so far removed away from our experience, but the truth is the same. The truth still stands. The Lord is God and there is no other. And no matter what you use as your object of worship, when brought before this God, you will not stand because it has no legs to stand like our God does. So Exodus chapter 8, verses 16 to 17. This is the third plague, the lies. The Bible tells us, So the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land, so that it may become lies throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became lice on men and beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Can I tell you, there were tons of lice. Tons and tons of lice. When I read this passage and I was preparing this message, I began to itch, scratch my head. You know the, the power of suggestion? You know, sometimes we travel... And uh, yes, when you get older, you find you've got to make more bathroom stops than you did when you were young. And one person will say, ah, I need to stop. And all of a sudden, everybody feels like, we need to stop. The power suggestion was so strong, I began to scratch my head. And I'm saying, man, lice. There was so much lice. But you realize, there was no warning about this plant. The first two, river into blood. The frogs, God came. This one, no uh, word from the Lord in warning to, uh, to Pharaoh. So we read, And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and he became lice on man and beast. All the dust of the earth became throughout all the land of Egypt. God says, stretch out your rod. Do you realize what Moses and Aaron have to do? They, all they have to do is follow the command of the Lord. He didn't say go sing and stomp on the, on, the, uh, on the dust. He didn't say lay in the dust and cry out and all those things. He said stretch out your hand. Stop for a minute. Forget about Pharaoh in the background here. Forget about the Egyptian. Think about Moses and Aaron. God speaks, they obey, and it happens. Who is this God that I need to tell the people has sent me? I'm the creator of heaven and earth, and everything are in my hands. And I can do with whatever is in my hands what I want, because there is no other power. Moses now realizes this is our God. He is the Almighty God. And his passion now turns toward his God. And I want you to just understand that. People can have passion for a program in the church, for the music in the church. They can have passion for the building of the church, its beautiful stained glass windows. Um, they can have passion for a lot of things. But let me tell you, if you don't have passion for the God in that church, your passion will not have an ounce of strength or anything. You see, Jesus didn't say, come follow a church. Jesus didn't say, come follow a pastor. Jesus didn't say, come and follow this program. Jesus said, come follow me. He is the life giver. And Moses begins to now realize that. He is seeing the evidence of who the Lord is. He will never go back to the children of Israel and say, uh, you know, the I am has sent me to you. Watch what happens. And this is just a, a tremendous study for my own heart and I hope it becomes for your heart. Stretch out your hand. The plague comes unannounced. This time God does not allow Pharaoh the mercy of a warning and an invitation to repentance. You see, we must never think that God is unfair when he does not show mercy. If someone 
is totally fair, they would never show mercy. He defied the living God. He defied the only God. He challenged the only God. And he's taken what belongs to God. The children of Israel were God's own possession. He had brought them. He's the one who brought Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, and through them, the, the tribes, the nation of Israel, they were his covenant people. But you see, Pharaoh thought he was God, and he could claim and take whatever he wants. Isn't that how the world is? The world wants to come and take whatever. Can I say to you, at this time, during the pandemic, do you realize the world, the governments, are beginning to impose their power over the church. And I will say to you as your pastor, I am not going to turn away from God's truth to obey the dictates of men. I will respect the dictates of men when they promote the right things for our safety. But I will not stop doing what God has called us to do as a church. And I will say this without any fear or shame, regardless of the cost to my personal life. And this is where you will see Moses is going to turn around when he says our God, when he says our Lord, he has now embraced God with both his arms. This is his God. And no matter what God would require of his life, he's willing now to go through it. Strike the dust of the earth and became lice on men and beasts and people, I used to fear. We used to do a wana uh, club in one of the churches. One time I heard some of the kids come and said, oh, there is lice pandemic going through our school. Ugh. I was teaching a group of young boys and I just loved them. And some of them had the habit of coming to give me a hug uh, every now and then and they would come and hug me and uh, just love me as their Awana leader. And uh, man, that day it was hard hugging these little kids because I didn't know where lice. You know, I went home and took a shower because I didn't want any of these lice uh, sharing lice. You know, but can I say to you, why would God use lice? You see, this plague struck at the heart of all Egyptian worship, especially at the priests. You see, the Egyptian priesthood was extremely scrupulous about hygiene and ritual cleansing. And an infestation of lice made them unable to worship their gods. So God took away from them the ability to worship their God. Isn't it funny? They would cleanse themselves so much before they would carry out their worship. And now even that was taken away from them. Sometime God will take what we think is most precious to us so that we will turn our attention to him and him alone. As a pastor, I've stood beside the graveyard of many a people and I've had the question, why God? Why this person? But I'll tell you what. Sometimes God will touch us at the point of great pain and sorrow just to turn our face towards him. See, the plague of lice was upon every beast. The gods of Egypt would not receive the sacrifice of lice-infested animals, so this stopped their sacrificial system. The Bible tells me God is a jealous God. Who dare to rouse his jealousy? The magicians of Egypt were unable to duplicate this plague. I want you to see what something very interesting happens. Verse 18 and 19. Now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there was lice on man and beast. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard and did not hit them just as the Lord had said. You see, they worked their enchantments. And now they were the advisor to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh will not even listen to his own advisors. 
because his heart has grown hard. Every move of God, he had in his heart, and God said, okay, I'll help you along the way, make move it faster. So here you see, with their enchantments to bring forth lice, this uh, magicians, but they could not. You see, if these magicians could use occult powers to change the rod into a snake, to turn water into blood, and to summon frogs, why couldn't they bring forth lice? Because as great as Satan's power is, it is limited. And it comes to limit rather early. That's why Jesus said, don't fear the one who can destroy the body. He said, fear the one who can destroy the body and the soul in hell. And that meant him alone. So you see, and people just are so much afraid about all this. So, Pharaoh's heart grew hard. He did not hit them. The hardness of Pharaoh's heart is shown that he will not even heed the analysis of his own advisors. There is no rational reason why he insists on resisting the Lord God. Pride is an insidious sin. And many a times in the church, our problem stems from our pride, from our hearts. My way or no way. Regardless on whose lives we will trample over, regardless whose testimony we will try to destroy, but we must get my way. And it's nothing but pride from the very minister who dispenses pride so easily, Satan himself, and that's the very thing he got kicked out of heaven for, was his pride. And that's the first of the temptation he inflicted mankind with, was pride. You shall become his gods. People, there's a, there's a battle today in our world. I cannot tell you, but I'll tell you, this pandemic, I can just say from my, my point of view, and whether anybody believes me or not, that doesn't bother me, I think it's the finger of God. Because men have stood and said, we can do this, we can do this, we can get to the moon, and now the Mars, and further on, and we can try to build a new planet out there, we can do this, we can take this world, and we can make it better, and we can preserve this world for as long as we want to, but we are going to do it my way. And God is saying, really? Really? Instead of turning our hearts to him, in fear and love and commitment. We're shaking our fist towards heaven. Recently you saw in the United States of America, I'm not talking Russia, China, or other Arab countries or communist countries, but I'm talking about the United States of America. They burnt Bibles. This is men's defiance against the living God. Were it so we would go and learn the lesson from Pharaoh, it would be good for our souls. But because of our pride and stubbornness of heart, I will do it my way. And not only that, I will create a God in my image, the God I can control. I can come to him when I want to feel a little godly. I can reject him when I want to. I can decorate him the way I want him to be decorated, but I don't want this God of the heavens who is holy. So can I say to you, God's people, when the Lord stands, you can do two things. You can bow down with your knee towards him, or you can stand with your fist up in the air. I'm choosing to bow down and say, you are the Lord. And I pray God will take his truth and capture your heart. Maybe you've not surrendered your heart to Jesus Christ. I pray this word offering for you to come to him and say, Lord, here I am. Take me. I pray that God will bless you. In Jesus' name.